for an in-depth look now at Janet Yellen's nomination and the future of what happens at the Federal Reserve. We welcome Cornell University Law Professor Robert Hockett. He's also an advisor for the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And we have so many questions for you. I'm going to try to get through it. Welcome to the show. She is going to be one of the most powerful women in the world. So the world has expectations, don't they? What are they? Thank you, Phil. Uh, so I think the world is hoping, I, I feel funny saying the world, but I think many people in the world are, are hoping that, that Fed policies continue as they have been doing uh, under uh, Chairman Bernanke's stewardship. Uh, and that's to say, I think that the world is hoping that the Fed will continue uh, to keep a careful watch on the economic recovery, to continue to operate with a relatively uh, uh, open-handed uh, monetary policy for as long uh, as the uh, American economic recovery uh, continues uh, as tepidly as it has been or as long as people are happy to see asset prices continue to rise. Um, what are her expectations, though? I mean, that's what everyone's expecting her to do, kind of sing the same song that Bernanke did as well. Does she have the exact same expectations, you think? Um, I, I don't know that I would say that she has the exact same expectations, but I think both she and Chairman Bernanke are, are quite pragmatic uh, central bankers. That's to say that they're not particularly doctrinaire. Uh, they don't uh, look to uh, sort of quash inflation before there's an, any reason to expect it to emerge. Uh, and by the same token, they don't look to uh, try to boost uh, the employment rate without reason to believe that the, um, that the employment rate is lower uh, than it ought to be um, or lower than it, it can sustainably be. So I, in, I, I wouldn't say that they have identical expectations or that they're identical people by any means or that they have identical policy preferences or orientations, but I would say that they share uh, a, a very common sense pragmatic outlook, very data driven. Uh, they look very carefully uh, at what uh, the long-term sustainable employment rate ought to be uh, in the economy. Uh, they look then to see whether current employment trends are in keeping uh, with that long-term sustainable rate. If they see some disparity between those two rates, hence if they see uh, significant uh, um, uh, underutilization of capacity, uh, they're quite willing uh, to engage in, uh, uh, again, open-handed liberal, uh, I'm sorry, uh, open-handed monetary policy in order to help boost uh, uh, economic activity in order to bring uh, potential uh, employment into, I mean, sorry, actual employment into uh, alignment with potential employment. Uh, and then they're, again, quite pragmatic about uh, taking their feet off of that particular accelerator when the time comes. And they, what, what, again, they're very data-driven. Professor, what, what do you think the yes. biggest difference is going to be between the, the two of them? A lot of people are speculating a lot of things, and I'm trying to avoid that, but I guess I have to ask the question is, is what's the biggest difference going to be? Oh, gosh, uh, that's just hard to say. I mean, I, I can't think right off the top of my head of any particularly important difference that you're likely to see. Um, the differences are apt to be a product of differences in the, in the environment, right, the environment that they're observing, rather than differences in their particular orientations or responses to the environment, right? So as uh, economic activity or as the pace of economic activity changes going forward, you can expect uh, changes in Fed policy. Uh, but that would be the product, I think, of those changes on the ground rather than differences between uh, uh, future Chairman uh, Yellen and uh, current Chairman Bernanke. When, when, when you look back at American politics, I mean, arguably she's probably the most powerful or second most powerful woman ever to take the position uh, in American politi politics. And I'm thinking, of course, of, uh, of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Do you think she brings something well, very yeah. unique to the table? I mean, not just the, because she's a woman, but she, she really, there's something special about her. What is that? Well, um, ag again, I think what's particularly uh, special about her is her pragmatism, right? Again, her, her, her lack of, how should I put it? I mean, she's not a particularly rigid, uh, doctrinally rigid person. She's, uh, again, a very common sense statesman-like woman uh, or statesman-like uh, regulator or statesman-like central banker, which is to say that she's responsive to facts on the ground and she's responsive to changes uh, that occur in the economy. Uh, and she makes judgments uh, in response to what she sees happening before her, while, of course, being mindful of the Fed's mandate, while uh, thereby being uh, mindful of the constraints pursuant to which any central banker uh, in the United States has to operate. So, something that is very much changing in America is the demographics of the workforce, the unemployment rate, um, how we look at the workforce today when we look at part-time and full-time. And the Fed, this is something that's been a challenge for them over the past couple of years, uh, this employment and even, uh, I would argue, underemployment. 
How is she going to view mm -hmm. unemployment in this particular case relative to the stimulus that's been happening, the $85 billion a month? Right. Well, I think the, the, the essential backdrop to keep in mind, and, and I think that all uh, Fed board members are mindful of this, although they haven't told me this uh, by any means, but uh, this is, it, would, it would be a, a reasonable inference uh, to suppose that all of the current Fed board members are mindful of the following backdrop. We recently had uh, a, a terrible, uh, uh, sorry, credit-fueled asset price bubble and following, uh, I'm sorry, ensuing bust uh, in our economy. Uh, ever since, we've been left with a significant private debt overhang. That's to say, millions of Americans owe much more on particular assets that, that they had to borrow to buy than those assets are now worth. I'm, of course, referring in particular to uh, housing uh, assets. That means we're faced with uh, what the great American economist Irving Fisher would have called the debt deflation. Uh, in other words, we have an ongoing situation in which consumer expenditure uh, is experiencing a continuing drag as a result of private debt overhang on the part of American consumers. That means there is a, a chronic tendency for us not to employ, for, uh, essentially for the pace of economic activity, not to result in the same degree of employment as we might otherwise experience. Ordinarily, fiscal policy is the way to deal with a, a problem like that. Ordinarily, that's to say the Congress and the White House together would be engaged in stimulative fiscal policy on the one hand uh, and private debt uh, reduction or write-down efforts on the other hand in order to address that underlying ongoing source of drag on the uh, macro economy. In the absence of that, we have to rely on monetary policy as an imperfect substitute. In particular, we have to uh, rely on open-handed uh, monetary policy no, it, as a substitute for that. It, it is going to be what a, I believe um, Chairman Bernanke. There, there's just so many Sorry? things to, to look at. It's going to be a real challenge for Janet Yellen, Professor Hawkett. I want to thank you very much for coming on Biz Asia America. Excellent analysis. Uh, thank you.